my viewers, my name is Olakpo Jubam Dede. I'm the managing partner of PPS, uh, a consulting firm based in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. It's my pleasure to take you through the tax implications of changes uh, recently made in the uh, VAT Act, which is Tax Finance Bill 2019. Uh, I would like to discuss with you this afternoon the implications to your business as taxpayer and also as buyers. Now, several sections were amended under VAT Act, which are Section 2, Section 4, 8, 10, 15, Subsections 1 and 2, Section 16, 19, 28, 32 was repealed, then Section 44 and 46 were all amended. The amendments aim at the following. I would like to take four major amendments. Let's look at the aim of the following amendments. Section 2 was amended to expand and clarify the scope of VAT in order to raise more potential revenue for government. While Section 4 uh, shows where the VAT rate was increased from 5% to 7.5%, which implies 50% increase in VAT rate. Then Section 8, you will find the rules uh, for registration of company uh, with FRS, the penalties for not registering at the right time, at the simulated time, then the conditions and procedures for the registration of company, especially where a business is going to permanent cessation. So that Section 8 provides the rules and the procedures and recommends the penalties it should in case uh, you default in any of the provisions. While Section 10 uh, is talking about registration by non-resident companies, there are things uh, related specifically to non-resident companies, companies that uh, are either in Nigeria and render offshore services or are outside Nigeria and rendering services to persons in Nigeria. Now let's look at the application number one. The VAT rate that was increased from 5 to 7.5 percent on all taxable goods and services means that uh, if you are raising invoices as a seller on taxable goods and services effective on February 1st, you have to know that you have to state 7.5 percent of the uh, selling price, no more 5 percent. And when you're also buying services, don't be surprised when you will see that uh, maybe the prices have gone up because of the increase in VAT rate on all taxable goods and services. Then two, goods physically present in Nigeria or imported into Nigeria for use are now chargeable to VAT. Unlike before where goods that are bought in another country and brought it to Nigeria, the imported services or goods, you know, are subjected to litigations, tribunal review, and all of that, whether they are chargeable to VAT or not. Right now, it is specifically, you know, written this amendment in the amended section that when goods are specifically present in Nigeria, whether you brought them into Nigeria through importation or they are put together here in Nigeria, they are all subjected to VAT. Then number three, implication. Services rendered by a person physically present in Nigeria or to a person resident in Nigeria, whether the services were rendered within or outside Nigeria, are subjected to VAT. This is what he's saying. Uh, it doesn't matter where the location, where the service provider is, whether within Nigeria or outside Nigeria, offshore. As long as the person consuming the service or receiving the goods is resident in Nigeria. Definitely, such groups are meant to be subjected to Nigeria V87.5%. Number four, commencement of a business has been comprehensively defined. Where to save yourself penalties, you have to register for VAT immediately. You incorporate your company with Corporate Affairs Commission CAC. Before now, there was a grace of six months between when you register your company with corporate affairs and when you are graced to register with FRS, six months in between. Even at that, the issue of commencement of a business has been very, very subjective. No clear cut definition for it. So on the side of taxpayers and on the other side of tax collectors, there's always contention as far when 
they do commence your business. But right now, it's very clear, crystal clear in the law, the VAT Act, that commencement of a business is earlier of the following. Number one, the day you start marketing. Number two, the day you made your first purchase. Number three, the day you made your first sales. And so on and so forth. So with the way it's defined now, you cannot but fall into default and pay penalties when you are just starting your business. So the best way to avoid the trouble, the penalties, is to immediately incorporate with CSA Affairs as Corporate Affairs Commission, you have a certificate of incorporation, go ahead to FRS or call your tax consultant to help you make necessary registration with FRS and collect your TIN number. Number five implication of the amendments of VAT Act is that henceforth, non-resident companies shall include VAT on their invoices for supply of taxable services. Non-resident company, companies that are offshore and they are selling goods to Nigeria or they are supplying services to somebody resident, resident in Nigeria. They are meant henceforth to put VAT on their sales invoices, especially for taxable goods and services. Number six, implication. The person to whom the service is supplied to Nigeria by an offshore company shall withhold the VAT and remit in the currency of the transactions to the service, to the FRS. This is what he's saying. If you receive services from an offshore company, and the offshore company has been mandated by law to put VAT, to charge VAT on taxable goods, on all taxable goods and services. You are meant, you have the responsibility as the buyer of the service or goods to remit the VAT, just like the way we used to do for withholding taxes, to remit, deduct it at the point of payment and remit it back to Federal and Land Revenue Service in the currency of the transaction. So if the invoice was dollar based, then the VAT remittance also is expected to be dollar based, not converting into any other currency before you remit. It has to be in the original currency of the transactions. Then, number seven, implication of the amendments. Where a person to whom the taxable service is made in Nigeria is issued an invoice on which no tax is charged, such a person shall self account for the tax payable and remit the output to the service within the timeline as prescribed under section 15 subsection 1. This is simply what it's saying. The responsibility for VAT collection now is now shared between the seller and the buyer. But right now, a, you know, in the, in the event of transactions across border, offshore, so when you buy goods or services and you are issued invoice, which uh, you are issued invoice, whether the VAT is charged on it or not, you know you have the responsibility now, according to subsection 15, subsection 1, to save account for the VAT on the transaction and deduct at the point of remitting payment to your seller overseas and remit the same to FRS. So the obligation is now shared. Unlike before, where it's only the seller that has the obligation to collect VAT on behalf of government. If you are buying goods and services offshore now, and you are resident in Nigeria, and the invoice is not is not showing VAT, especially if it's vertible goods or services, you must self account for the VAT and remit the same back to FRS within uh, the stipulated time as required by the law. Then another important uh, change that we must uh, pay attention to in section 15, subsection one. It has been repealed and replaced with a threshold of 25 million naira turnover to qualify a taxable person from payment of VAT on taxable supplies. The purposes of these amendments are number one, to serve as palliative measure to cushion the effect of increase in the rate of VAT from 5 to 7.5 percent on the population. Number two, to align local law with global best practices that protect the most vulnerable from exposure to VAT. 
are for businesses that do not have up to 25 million naira as turnover in the particular year. That's a threshold now. If you don't have up to 25 million naira turnover, now you are exempted from payment of VAT until the time you we have turnover up to 25 million. This is the meaning. If in the last financial year, as of December 2019, let's assume your financial year ends in December and your turnover was just 20 million naira, you are not supposed to file returns henceforth. Neither are you supposed to pay VAT henceforth until your turnover hit that threshold of 25 million. All right. So, and the purpose for this is just to because in the in the event of increasing the rate from five to seven point five percent, you know, definitely there will be inflation. There will be inflation. Definitely, there will be increase in cost of goods and services, and just to protect the poor from the high impact, the heavy impact of this VAT thing. That's the reason for this amendment, and also to align the our local law with best parties all over the world, where there's always a threshold to encourage small business before you can start payment of VAT. And in addition to that, uh, no payment of VAT for small companies whose turnover is below 25 million naira turnover in a year. We need to understand that uh, the further implication of it is they are not required to charge VAT. So if you are not going to pay VAT because you have a, you are below the threshold of 25 million, you are also not required to charge VAT when you issue invoices and you are not also required to file VAT returns until you hit the threshold either through cumulative transactions or a single transaction whichever comes earlier so like i gave the example the other time 20 million total turnover as december 2019 now in new year is either that you hit 25 million turnover at once or cumulatively up to certain point when it reached 25 million in the new year either of the two either a one single transaction or cumulatively in the new year 2020 then until you reach 25 million turnover you are accepted from payment of VAT. then you are also accepted from charging VAT on invoices you are raising and you are accepted from filing vat returns but there's a controversy here the controversy i notice that will come up is this if the purpose of cushioning the effect of vat increase you know it's, it's already defeated i believe when the buyer of service or goods is required to self account for the vat not charged by the below the threshold company this is a controversy that will come up because when you are dealing with non-resident companies we are asked under the amended section that if your vat if a sensible good is not charge VAT on the invoice. You have to self account and remit such. I'm sure tax collectors will be going to model up this section with this. That, okay, uh, you said you bought these things from a below the threshold company, small company. Then are you not supposed to self account? You know, all kind of, kind of controversy. But as time goes on, we see all of this. But definitely a threshold is established now, 25 million turnover. If you don't reach it, don't pay VAT, don't collect VAT, don't remit, and don't file VAT returns. Okay, now let's look at the amendment that took place on section 40. It's talking about remission of tax. A taxable person, when rendering monthly returns, must render the net proceeds of the VAT collected by matching the proceeds of the outputs as against the payment of the input. This was supposed to be the practice before, even though it was not clearly stated like this in relevant law. And also before now, there's always controversy and problem with you submitting your input VAT with tax authorities. Many times they will reject it and all of that. But right now, the law says that on monthly basis, as you are filing your VAT proceed, the VAT you collected from your buyers, make sure you also account for VAT you paid and VAT you also paid out, especially on direct costs. Input, we call it input VAT so that you match the output with input then you find the net process so if your output vat you collected is hundred thousand and your input VAT you paid on goods and relevant goods and service as related to your business is thirty thousand so what you need to do is to 
when you are filing your returns at the end of the month, you match 100,000 against 30,000, then you have 70,000 as net proceeds, no relevant input uh, invoices, then you file with uh, Federal Revenue Service. Then Section 41 talks about effect of non remittances Right now, under the VAT Act, there are about five penalties that must be afforded at all costs. Because these penalties have been increased. Uh, penalty from 5,000 to 25,000, that's just about 400% increase. So there are five penalties. If you default, then you have five specific penalties to pay now under this new tax regime. Let me take you through them. Number one, failure to register for VAT at commencement, according to Section 8. The penalty will be 50000 in the first month of failure, 25000 in the subsequent month in which the failure continues. The implication of this is if you have companies you've registered in the past and you register with CEC, and up to now, you just give the certificate somewhere and you have not gone to register with FRS before February 1st, 2020. So your penalty, first month penalty in February 2020 will be 50,000. Then for not registering at the right time, then subsequent month, 25,000 each. So it's better to just quickly go ahead and do the normal registration now. On that, let me also talk about companies that used to register with their team with bank you know in instances where you just want to open bank account most of the time bankers will just collect your details and help you register and help you open i don't know how they do it but in their banks they do it in construction maybe in conjunction with frs and just get a number but if that practice continues in new regime you'll be liable to penalties because that is not proper registration You're supposed to go and regularize with nearest frs office by providing all the necessary papers. So please, let's take note of that first penalty that has to do with non-registration for VATs at commencement. And don't forget that commencement now is clearly defined. So, and the best, what is commencement now is you register your company now. Just go with CSE, just go ahead at the same time and register with FRS. Number two, default and penalty under VAT Act is your failure to notify the service of permanent cessation of business within 90 days of such cessation. That's according to section 43. The penalty for that is 50,000 the first month of failure, 25,000 the subsequent month in which the failure continues. So unlike before where you say, I don't want to do this business anymore, you just go and throw this certificate somewhere and you forget about it. One, two, three years later, you go back to it. It's no more so. If you are going into permanent cessation, you know, sometimes there are temporary cessation in between that. Look, maybe there's no business that you feel like you want to rest business for a while. You can write a letter to them. That has been the practice. Oh, I'm suspending my business transaction for a while. That will save you a lot of headache in terms of filing and all of that. But this one is specifically talking about when you know that you want to permanently cease from that business, want to close the business, either you want to do uh, uh, voluntary winding up or court sanction winding up, or creditors winding up, whatever it's voluntary members winding up, cut or that winding up, or whatever you want to do, or you just want to stop the business. Within 90 days of making such decision, you need to approach the uh, your FRS office and apply in writing, notify them. Failure to do that, you have penalties to pay. 50,000 the first month and 25,000 the subsequent month in which the failure continues. Number three, uh, default and penalty. When you fail to notify FRS of changes of address, that's section 43. You are changing the, your business location from one point to another and you fail to notify the FRS office in writing. You have 50,000 to pay in the first month of failure as penalty and 25,000 in the subsequent month in which the failure continues. Then another one, number four, default and penalty under VAT Act, your failure to submit your returns. Return has to do with your monthly VAT returns. The 50,000 in the first month of failure, 25,000 in the subsequent month in which the failure continues. Let's take note of that. 
before it used to be 5,000, but now it's huge. So the best thing is to just fire within the stipulated time. Now, uh, let's look at the fifth uh, default and the penalty it attracts under VAT Act. Failure to remit VAT collected, that's according to Section 19. When you fail to remit VAT you have collected on behalf of government or you under remitted and you are now waiting for the taxman to come and tell you what you actually owe. You know fully well that such amount or remitted or under remitted will attract a penalty of 10% plus uh, a ruling interest rate as dictated by CDN. So uh, lapses under the new tax regime or especially of VAT are heavily punished. The punitive measures, all of them carry heavy, heavy penalty. So the, the best thing is do the right thing at the right time. Engage a good consultant to help you do your tax planning and compliances at the right time. With that, you avoid most of the penalties, if not all. Now, uh, another thing we need to note that you need to know as a taxpayer, uh, as uh, changes that is taking place already under the new uh, VAT Act, is this. A new section called Section 42 places additional conditions on sale and reorganization of business in related party arrangements. The purpose is to close the tax loopholes on related party business. This is what it's saying, uh, especially when there's a takeover or a takeover by one company and another or absorption or purchase, you know, and uh, so there are several tax loopholes that taxpayers have been, you know, have been fiddling and playing with, you know, in the time past. But right now, um, there are stringent conditions, additional conditions that are attached, especially paying attention to related party transactions, where the companies in question that want to take over, want to buy, and all of that, you know, has relationship with the other company, either in form of common directors or in form of uh, equity holding and all of that. So that section 42 places additional restrictions or conditions in the case of sale and reorganization of businesses, especially where related party transactions are involved. Then in the fifth schedule, section two, the basic food items have now, which before now, have that exempted have now been expanded into specific stable foods, mainly in unprocessed or semi-processed form. Before now, the fifth schedule, section two, talks about that says that basic food items are exempted from VAT. Uh, but with this amendment in section two or fifth schedule, it now specifically define those food items that are exempted from VAT and the principle behind it is that stable foods, especially the ones that are unprocessed or semi-processed foods, uh, examples of them are table, water, salt, fish, other than ornament, ornamental fish, yam, etc, etc, etc. So I'll be able to effectively take you through the changes that are already taking place as a result of the VAT Act amended, uh, which is Tax Finance Bill 2019. Now, the effective date for implementation is February 1st, 2020. So, all the changes I've mentioned from the beginning to the end will take effect from February 2020, February 1st, 2020. So, the best thing to do is to uh, take precautions and to possibly get uh, a good consultant to help you manage your tax affairs, do proper tax planning, and uh, watch over those figures to ensure that your bottom line doesn't go down the drain through uh, ignorance or through uh, lapses in filing the necessary returns and necessary tax advice. So you want to ask us more questions, you can see the numbers or the email and get across to us. We'll be glad to give you more explanation that will benefit you as far as VAT Act uh, amendment uh, is concerned.
Thank you. See you another day. God bless you.